Welcome back everyone. Today we will be fitting the floor pan and fitting basic uh, radio gear on these points just here. Um, I'm going to show you this because not everyone will be installing the multifunction control unit. So for the benefit of you guys that are going to be uh, building on a budget, I'm going to be just fitting the basic electronics that you're going to need just to get your truck up and running so let's get started so first we're going to need the floor pans the seat bases and the battery bars that hold everything in and basically this is what we have this is the cab this is the sleeper And all the fittings I've got ready just here. This is um, steps 33. And then we're moving on to the next step when we've done this. This is uh, quite a lot of parts for step 33. Picture over here. So the first thing we are going to be fitting is these angled brackets just here now they are all the same two brackets two posts two step bolts for that and we have these just for um, bolting them through I haven't got the um, self tapper screws which are BF1s for the seats I'll get those in a moment um, but the BF1s that will be these little ones just here see we're getting down the parts pretty do good. How many of them we need? We need ten of those. Two, three, four, five. Eight, nine, and ten. So that's five. Not one too many. Stick that back in there. So the orientation this way. These hang down the way like that. You can't really get these wrong. So grab my screwdriver. I mean, why are they using eight millimeter? screws for this I don't know when six mil would be enough but I suppose it is supporting the cab and they do only just come through just here so there must be a reason for that I'll let Tammy do the research as for the whys and what's and I'll just build it according to the manual. I'm not going to waffle on through this uh, video. I watched them back and I thought, you talk too much. So that's there like that, with two brackets. I'm going to put these two on here, so with this battery tray up this way. These ones are like that. So we can just do that one straight down from above. I hope I'm still in shot. Yes, I am. Get 
one in, and get the other one in. So there's movement to adjust and get comfortable. So let's just uh, continue with these uh, step bolts. This is what holds in your batteries, your battery pack. You can either use the box spanner, which I will do because I can't be bothered to fetch the hoodie tool out of my toolbox. And then two step bolts. Now you can see on here, on the map, on the plan, that these ridge lines go straight across with this flat part at the end. So these step bolts go through like that. So these ridges are like this and the flat part just there. There we go. And then they will fit show it in this but it will show you in the next one two of those I'm just going to put those in there like this so I can see if that is a little bit just a tad so the clips are this way so the holes are that way and then that is enough so okay the seats I have already painted the seats. I'll just get them from over here. And the seats I have painted because the truck is green and it's from the series moving on. And there's going to be details on there that's going to be um, uh, the white mud flaps over here. I wanted the interior to be a little bit special so I'm going to put these these in just painted white with two green stripes I painted the seat a neutral color because we're not really going to see those once it's all fitted together and then from underneath those eight millimeter BF1 
and make sure that that goes in straight. And just tighten it down slowly. Position the seat over its two little notches. That's one. You can see these two little notches. I don't know when you guys are watching this, but today is Sunday. Sunday morning. So there we have the seats. I'm going to be putting a um, Kenworth emblem on there. I do have some somewhere. And they fit like this. So I'm going to turn the truck around so it looks like this just remember that this is the um, kit build that I'm doing for the basic electrics as per the build manual Why doesn't that go through there? That's because that's in parts bag B. They are quite long. They're the silver ones as well. So, silver one, two, three. There's four for the sleeper and four for the cab floor. And they drop through there and screw into the top of the frame. Let's line that up. And just snug that down. There's four. One in each corner. I'm not going to put all four in because... I am going to be disassembling this because this is going to have the MFC fitted. And then the sleeper cab jumps on top of there. They are the BF2s, which are the short ones. For the sleeper cab, because they get recessed down into there. So now we have um, the floor on. We get our electronic speed control. I use very, very good um, hobby wing distributed in the UK by Schumacher. Use them in a lot of my models. This is the 1060. Don't really need any more in these trucks. We have forward, brake, and reverse. And depending on these, let me show you on the actual, actual thing here. Is that the right way up? Get it the right way up. And then we can see just here, that this bottom one can have nickel metal hydride batteries or lithium polymer. So we put this jumper cable, which you just pull out and put it in the... Um, nickel metal or the lipo position and then this 
one here shows us if we've removed it completely we just have forward and reverse which is good for crawlers and um, if it's over on the right hand side we can have forward and brake only and if we have it in the position that it's in now that is forward brake well forward down for brake back to central and then back again for reverse so it's double tap reverse very very good very compact little quick run 1060 very very good uh, got them in a lot of my uh, models and yeah never had a problem with them now you see on the plan here where this switch mounts into the kit coupler plate well I've done the the option plate so if you're just installing basics and you're not using this option then you use this um, to mount your switch so for the purpose of this video I am just going to install the I'm actually going to plug it all together and actually make it work with the wheels so this is obviously the electronic speed control which will plug into channel one and that is going to have i'm going to put them it does say in the manual to stick down these with double-sided tape um, because i'm going to be installing the multifunction control and i don't need to yes i've got an ec3 connection on this battery but i also have an adapter I've made up so I can use speed controls with a um, standard Tamiya uh, connection. So I'll just plug that into there. So then we need to find out which is our steering servo, and that is this one. So I've just identified that as steering servo. It does say to put the cables between the seats you can route them um, around the seats if you want but for the purpose of this video steering will be in channel 2 we have to make sure that we get this white wire on some other it might be orange but the white or the orange wire will be the signal wire and then we have this transmission servo goes into channel 4 so we stick that down we can stick that down let me just put that all together really not Helping with um, uh, get the motor wires out, and we plug the blue to the red and the yellow to the We get into the black wire, right? So imagine these are stuck down. Let me get my radio. There's a point to note always turn on your radio before you turn on the model because if you haven't set the fail safe. And it fails to either forward or reverse, then your model's just going to fly straight off the table. 
I never run vehicles unless I have the rear end off the floor. Even if I've got no wheels on. Because I have lost quite a few off the end of the table. I'm sure most of us have. The ones that have, the ones of us that have been in this game for um, a fair few years. So, for the sake of this, we're going to imagine that those are already stuck down. Uh, let me move this across here so you can see. You have plenty of uh, wires. And if you wanted, after you've got everything working, I like to use something that's just going to tidy the cables up. I use uh, braiding, take the plugs off, but there's this stuff you can get off eBay and it's just spiral wrap. And all that simply does is spirally wraps around your cables and it just keeps them all together. Or you could just zip tie them together. It's entirely up to you. Some people don't mind seeing a bunch of wires Personally, I like to see them. I not see any of that. I like to see neat wiring. So, imagine that those are stuck in place. We turn on our radio. I always set mine to fail safe. Let me go down to onto my model. And now that is on, we can then turn on the speed control. Excellent. We have a light here that says everything's working, so the throttle should go forward. See that? It's going backwards. And then when we pull the stick down, simply let me unwrap these wires. If it goes the wrong way, it is a simple case of swapping those motor wires around. Because it's a DC motor, it is happily happy to run in both directions so now if we look at this that's forward and down for brake and then down again for reverse you hear that there's more power then reverse, then forward, then, then re reverse is going to be the reduced um, power output because obviously we go faster in forward than we do in reverse. And then we have a look at the steering servo, which I'm going to, which is down here. That looks pretty good to me. That is steps 34, 35 and 36 done all in a short space of time. Then we get to uh, stage 37. And so stage 37 is aligning the steering. This is why I've put it upside down. I've lifted it up off the ground with... Um, the ESC box <coughs> because I don't want the weight pushing down on the seats and uh, breaking them off and I've tilted it up at the back just so you can get a better view of uh, what's happening here I'll bring the radio into shot so this is the steering Uh, 
and if we look down according to this picture which I'm going to put at the top here I'm going to leave it hanging for a while so you guys can see that let me bring this much further forward so you can see those servos and the axle while the picture is taking up this top part so this is the picture that we're going to be looking at up there so I can see looking down from above that that is slightly out we can alter that uh, with trim we can alter that with that's good enough with this radio I can do it with uh, the menu and sub trim it's a little bit more involving if you guys want to um, see a video on how to do that that's fine but on the trim we can see that we're right over this way just here so if I put that back back to center that's off now we can either alter this rod make it longer so it straightens everything up or we can try and slacken this off as you can see I've took the servo saver off because from above this rod here is now more parallel to the axle than it was the other way around and as you can see it doesn't hinder the the other servo saver so I would make this far longer um, so it straightens everything up or you're just going to be driving around a corner all the time this is the gear servo so if I drive forward I do have drive because the prop shaft is spinning and if I move this stick that gives me full speed now that channel needs reversing because this way is supposed to be first gear center is supposed to be that is second and that is third first sorry should should be so I'll, mm, I'll reverse that which is elevator no it's aileron that's that done that's reversed so now it is see that clicking noise this needs adjusting so we just move that out a little bit so it throws it a bit further that way just needed that little bit of a help So that is your basic install with the basic setting of the steering up if it's not uh, in line you can adjust it with the trim or you can adjust it with this as you would any rear vehicle. Um, you can alter it in sub trim if you have a digital radio. And basically guys that is the, um, the basic installation. of um, a radio into your King Hauler and that really goes for any truck any truck that you want that is how we set up we need a receiver we need the speed controller plugging into the throttle part of the receiver and then the steering 
and gears go into channels two and four. If you have it, um, if you plug this at the gear servo in channel three, then you get this, this one. So yeah, um, that's it guys for basic radio install. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this out because it's not going to be needed anymore. Just remember to turn off your model first because if you turn the radio off and the radio is not set to a fail safe when it loses signal to the receiver, the receiver could fail safe into either forward or reverse and there goes your model. You'll smash your model up if it finds a curb or a skirting board or worse still, you, you could find yourself crashing into somebody else's uh, truck that they've spent a lot of time on um, th the same as you so yeah just turn your radio off last always your model first and when you're switching on switch your radio on first so your receiver can connect straight away that's it guys any questions leave a comment uh, give me a like and um, really appreciate that um, just gives me the enthusiasm to do more of these videos um and subscribe it's it's good to see uh people sub subscribing y you will get recommendations from other similar channels as well so yeah let's all enjoy the hobby together and um see you next time